So I'll end with two more quotes, one from the guy in the beginning, UN Secretary General, and one from the chair of the IPCC. And I quote, our world needs climate action on all fronts, everything, everywhere, all at once. Next quote, if we act now, we can still secure a livable, sustainable future for all. There's still hope, folks. There's still hope. So when you said everything we can do, my mind immediately went back to what you talked about in terms of our data and your provocative, they should pay you, they should pay you for the data they're using on the back of your your labor, of your identity, of everything. Data dignity, out folks. There. Data, data dignity. Data dignity. And I was like, you know what? Am I not speaking about the exact same thing for climate change? Yeah, you could do all that. And I'm happy to have people do all that on their own and say, you know, I want I don't I want a future for my children. I want a future for my grandchildren. I want to compost. I'm going to do everything I possibly can. But at the end of the day. The, the, literally, the society you live in is acting against you. If Yeah, sure. Maybe you want a bike to work every day. But guess what? Where you live, it's a freeway between you and your job. And the only way you can get to work is by using that freeway. So as much as you may want a bike and get there, it's the society that you live in that is actively preventing you from being as carbon neutral as you possibly can be. So in order to change all this, which is what we were talking about, a lot of these areas need fresh funds. They need revenue. The billionaire fossil fuel industry should be paying you to be carbon neutral. People should be paid. Forget about the bike analogy, but people should be paid for composting. People should be paid for proving that their home is generating like a net zero in terms of their carbon emissions. Getting down to zero, you should be getting a check. A check should be delivered to you for helping out the environment and helping out our society and providing a future for the children and their children and the children's children. ExxonMobil posted $56 billion in profit in 2022. Okay. That is $6.3 million per hour in the year of 2022. That means every hour ExxonMobil, because everyone needs to buy gas to get to work, they were earning $6.3 million dollars which is a record it's a historic high for western oil industry that's 2022 that's a year of pandemic that's a year coming out of the pandemic and that remember the fuel industry is posting get, a record profit people were supposed to be sitting at home we, co we covered this last time it's record profit yeah and they have the most subsidies that's what right. are we subsidizing what that's do they right. need it for yeah you're subsidizing your future you're, you're, you're subsidizing them and they're cutting your future short with those subsidies. So at the end of the day, the title I'm just, of oh, our last episode, we're funding our own extinction. That, like, what are we that's doing? Exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and you're not you're not profiting from it in any way, shape or form. No one's getting a check from ExxonMobil. But you know what gives you a tax rebate, like a gas rebate for having purchased X number of gallons last year or X number of gallons in a year? And yeah, for you people who are shareholders who are leeching off the back of these companies, good for you, but I don't care about you. What I care about is everybody else. Everybody else out there who doesn't have a hand in Exxon's pocket, okay? For you out there, you listening out there, I'm telling you right now, you should have to buy shares to give this company even more money. Because again, that's like a triple tax. If you buy shares into Exxon Mobil, you're, you, you're giving them money that way. You're giving the money through government taxes, okay, the federal taxes, because they're getting money on that way. And I bet you if you're in an oil-promoting state, your state is also taxing you to give money to that company. So let's say you're a Texan right now, and you don't have, and you did buy ExxonMobil shares, and you're looking at that as your, your goose egg, your retirement right now. I want you to know that that's your third tax. The one tax you're looking for some sort of some back on that, some sort of buyback on that with the either the um, the dividends that they're going to like the the Keasley, the the paltry cents you're going to get from the money that you've given this company that doesn't offset the fact that you've already been taxed twice giving money to that company. The Fed taxed you and your state taxed you, gave money to that company, and then you on top of that decided to give extra money to that company in the hopes that they give you a couple of cents back. That's the relationship. That's a, that's what we call an abusive relationship. <laughs> if, if I were just to put that out to you without telling you 
that it's Exxon Mobil that you're doing that to. And I just said, this is a person that li- this is your neighbor, your neighbor, Frank, your neighbor, Frank, you pay for his home. You know how angry you would be if I told you that your neighbor, Frank, especially if he's not the same race as you. If I said to you that you are paying for Frank's home, how angry would you be? Like, what is the I want you to think about that right now, listener. Think of like how that's boiling up in your in your gut, like in your belly. You're like, I just told you, man, you just paid for your neighbor's house. You're gonna be like, what? What do you mean I paid for my neighbor's house? That's ridiculous. My neighbor could pay for their own house. Guess what? Exxon could pay for their own house. Exxon could pay for their own house. You don't need to pay for their house three times over, which is what most people, especially if you live again in a state that is something that is heavily subsidizing them in order to be headquartered there, you're paying for their own house. That is ridiculous. That's not something that needs to be done. We all need to be rallying around this cry to say that give us the money, give the people back the money, make it so that Roger in in Connecticut doesn't have to take the I-95 to get to work. Give him a back road that allows him to bike to work. Give him something else. Give him money for every time he composts. Give him money for every time he recycles. There needs to be an accounting for that. Because if we want to save our future, that's the sacrifice that needs to be made. Yes, people need to sacrifice, no doubt about that. But that sacrifice in kind can be repaid. And it can be repaid immediately. It's not something that we need to look well into the future, 15, 20, 30 years down the road. Next year. You could be getting your dividend. We could be taxing Exxon properly, screw these subsidies and say, make it out on your own. And with them not being able to do whatever it is they think they can't do without the subsidy, we roll that back into your own town. Stop paying for your neighbor's house. That's Exxon. You don't need to pay for their house. They can pay for their own house. That's a future I I think that is worth worth selling. That's a future I think that is worth uh, eyeing. And that, that's a future that we should be demanding from our representatives who are paid by these guys. We should be demanding these checks, these checks for everyone that is ruining the future of our world. They should be giving us money as a recompense for that ruining. And then with that money, we should be trying to undo some of the harm that has seemed to be almost irreversible. We should be starting to reverse that harm. And that's my soapbox. That's my soapbox out. Okay. That- is wonderful place to leave it i think that was well said and and it it was it was interesting i mean it'll never happen but (laughs) a guy could dream (laughs) but i (laughs) like the idea the thing is is that you say it'll never happen it's not like it doesn't happen within the human race other countries incentivize their citizens to do the right thing because transition Transition is hard and not everyone has the means to transition. Yep. So it it's not unheard of. It's just against a major propaganda movement in this country. And um, it's hard to really envision how to overcome that today with some of the things that people parrot and believe and tell themselves. So I'm hopeful that... <laughs> Either they smarten up or things get bad enough where we reach some threshold where they're like, hey, you know, maybe an LED light bulb goes off in their head and they're like, hey, there <laughs> may be something up here. Uh, why isn't what what are what are our people not telling us? My life is negatively impacted now. But um, yeah, I think that that's I think that's really interesting. Yeah, that could well, work. 